Hi, this is Parts Project, and we're going to do MIDI scenes on the Dig Attack today. It's pretty pretty similar to the MIDI scenes trick that I did for the uh, uh, in that in an, in another video uh, for the audio tracks. You can do MIDI scenes for the audio tracks, and the MIDI tracks they both work pretty much the same. But since MIDI tracks are inherently a little bit different than the audio tracks, you could just go through it, and I thought it'd be fun. So just as the um, as the uh, audio track thing, uh, for this to work, you need an external sequencer. It can be any external sequencer. It doesn't have to just be model samples. I at the time I did the last video, I didn't know that for sure. It wasn't kind of had a feeling, but I hadn't tested it because I don't really, I didn't really have another uh, another sequencer really that. Uh, but uh, everyone uh, that has tried with any other sequencer said that it worked. So I kind of, I, it's looking like it pretty much you can do it with any external sequencer. And, um, oh yeah, also you can do it with the Digitone instead of a Digitech. Like you could just, if I had the Digitone, I could just do this and do the edit thing. But I don't, so I'm, you just have to imagine it changing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's pretty cool. You can do it with the, um, Analog 4, apparently, as well. Pretty interesting. So to set this up, we've got... Uh, I'm just going to mute all the drum tracks and just have... Uh, there we go. All right, so I've got track 6 sending out MIDI and uh, track 6 channel 9. And then track... Uh, MIDI track 1, or I guess they call it A, is receiving on channel 9 in MIDI config you go to channels make sure A is receiving on channel 9 yes and uh, oh, let me just quickly do something track B or A or yeah that's channel 9 okay good so uh dig attack receiving on channel 9 and then MIDI channel 9 since it's set to 9 I guess it's going to send at 9 and then you just set the typhon to receive at 9 or all but uh yeah, so make sure it's it's able to receive on channel 9 there. And it's going to work. So then uh, what have I got? Like some kind of a... Uh, let's just uh, play some... Let's put it at 16 steps. And let's make sure it's not something that we're going to... Uh, get absolutely tired of Let's... there that's the least annoying thing so far so just like with the uh, audio track trick, make sure you go on a MIDI track uh, A here and open up the sequencer and fill them all with fill trigs. Make sure they're all fill trigs. And, um, and then when you hold down, that's all you have to do. And so now when you, whenever you hold down, let's find one where there's nothing on it yet. Yeah. You just... Um, Hold down the trig, and then turn any parameter you want. And normally it just affects that one trig, but in this case, when it's being uh, sequenced externally, it just seems to behave in this way. This isn't in any manuals or anything, it's just kind of something... Uh, it's just a, a little uh, idiosyncrasy of electron gear, I suppose. It affects the entire uh, sound. And then when you let go, it goes back. Hold it down. Let it go, it goes back. Let's make it more uh, extreme. Turn up the uh, mix. This one's controlling the mix of effect number three in the Typhon here, so you can hear that. And then what else we got? Uh... Oh yeah, it's like a high pass. There we go, now let go. And it goes back. Great. 
So, um, because these are MIDI, MIDI tracks, uh, uh, you have to set them up to send the, for these knobs to send the, just in case you're kind of, uh, not quite there yet with the MIDI and going, how do you set up? So uh, these knobs have to be sending the right CC numbers to control the parameters on the Typhon that have those same CC numbers. Uh, in on MIDI tracks, the filter page is now the control page. So these are the, this is where you go to actually t tweak the knobs. And then on the amp page, it's where you set the CC numbers for those knobs. In the Typhon, as beautiful as it is, there is uh, the MIDI C chart, MIDI CC chart, I should say, is right here. So you just uh, go into, there's the CC list, and here it is. You just scroll up and down, you see all the numbers, and you can work right from in there. You don't have to find the chart online. And I think that's pretty cool. It's the first piece of gear I've had that that has that, so it's kind of neat for me. Oh, glide, you can control the glide. All right, so set the numbers. You know, you say, oh, there's number two, CC2, whatever that means, and set this knob to number two, and then it'll just, boom, it'll control it. So I've got, uh, you know, like here on, on I've got, uh, this is uh, cutoff. This is resonance. This is uh, filter envelope uh amount i guess how much you hear the envelope of the filter and this one is the time how quickly it does what it's doing and what are these these are oh yeah that's like a release amp release amp time oh yeah if I just want to do it then, or like have it ring out again. All right. And then these are effect two and three mix, I believe. Yeah. Here's the chorus and here's the... Great. So uh, once it's set up, then you just do that uh, fill trick thing and then you just hold them down and now there's scenes. Uh, there's eight MIDI tracks. So each MIDI track only has... Uh, eight customizable parameters here, plus some of the uh, the pitch band and stuff like that. But we're gonna just stick with the custom ones for now. The uh, or for this video, and then so that's that's for one track. It's on track uh, MIDI track A. So if we want to include more than eight parameters in a single scene, then it, it, again this works just like the audio tracks. You go to track MIDI track uh, B here. And now we do the same thing. We set some CC numbers. What do, did I have? I didn't have anything set on this one, but I'll just do one just to show you that it can. I had I did the the VCA attack before, but that was a little subtle. It was a little too extreme. I mean, what would be nice? Ooh, that glide seemed pretty. Where is it? Was it just up at the top? Yeah, let's play with that glide. Number seven, so uh, CC number for the glide function in the Typhon is seven. So we're here in the amp page. We, we want this knob to control that parameter. So we set this one on the amp page to seven. And uh, now on the uh, go to the control page, it should work. Uh, but you can't tell unless you're... Okay, so let's see. Now let's turn it up. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful. So, to include these parameters in the same scene as track, uh, as the other MIDI track, all we have to do is go to this track where these parameters exist, but we can, where was, let's say, okay, let's go to track one and just create, mute the drums for now. So we've got track A, track A's got all these parameters on it, but track B, for the same trig here, trig number 15, doesn't have any. So we'll go on to, yeah, we're already on. We're on, uh, now we'll go on to uh, MIDI track B. 
and turn the glide up. So now that glide is on those is that parameters on MIDI on the on one MIDI track, and the other parameters are on the first MIDI track. But it doesn't matter what track you're on, as long as you hold down that one trig where those parameters from the other track were put on, they're going to activate. So we go to track the other track uh, MIDI track A, hold down that trig. It's the same thing. And this works just the same way with the audio tracks. Uh, in fact, the audio tracks and the MIDI tracks can all be included on the same scene. So let's just bring the drums in and uh, go to uh, some of these scenes up here have MIDI track P-locks in them and audio track P-locks. So you notice I hold that one down, it mutes the kick and probably some other things clap and everything is being the clap let's bring the percussion on yeah this one mutes all that stuff uh, but it also has the uh, it, it affects all this stuff in the in the MIDI track as well uh, including this one this one mutes that what does this one do uh, see this one is only controlling the audio tracks it's not this one there's been no MIDI track uh, parameters included in this particular scene. This scene is only affecting the drums. This one appears to only be affecting the MIDI tracks, so you see what I mean? But you can have some that affect both, like this one, and then bring it back, you know? So you organize it how you want, like you can have these just controlling the MIDI tracks and these ones just the drums, or the, maybe this side will be only for drums, this side only for MIDI, or you could have one row that's that does both, that affects both of them. And then, don't forget, on each page you can have uh, 16 completely different scenes. So you could have sort of a 16... Anyway, you decide how to organize it. I, I, I feel in the future what I'm going to do is have each like each page have everything I could want, a little bit of every uh, possible sort of like, this is just drum, this is just audio, this is just MIDI, this is both, and this is something else. And then just duplicate that on the next page, but have them be slightly, like have them be different. That's, that's just what I might do. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the, 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 the most of it like that's that's the the main part just wanted to show that you can have it all across the tracks uh all all midi tracks you could have um eight parameters per midi track and include all eight of those parameters in a single scene all you have to do is go to the next track hold down that same trig turn them and then go to this track hold down the same trig Turn those knobs. See, th these ones, I haven't set them up for all the tracks, but you can. You just set them all up. See, these ones are turned on. Those are turned on. These ones aren't yet. All you have to do is just do the same thing. If you want to save time, you could just set it all up for one and then copy those MIDI settings across and then go through them and change them a bit instead of having to, like, turn them on. And But I like the Typhon because it's got the, the MIDI chart in there. It makes it really a lot faster to work with. And there was... Uh... Oh yes, there was um a uh, shout out to Darbert Schneider. Uh he's got a YouTube channel. Um he 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 piped up with this way of cuz so far I've only been uh the way this works is it's basically just one uh one what am I talking about? You hold down you hold down the scene and when you're holding it down it affects and when you let go it comes back. But there, I didn't really have a way to hold it. I was figuring I, I would just get like a heavy little figurine and place it there. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. But uh, I hadn't really gotten to that point yet. But what, um, let's find the cool one here. I like, oh yeah, I like that one. So uh, what he showed me was you can hold down uh, a, uh, a scene if you want to actually have it hold without touching it. Now pay, pay attention. Watch carefully. You go function and uh, the tool wheel thing, just like you'd save, like that. It asks you if you want to save. Hit no. Now. Oh, it didn't work. Hang on. Let me try it again. Ah, 
Uh, yes, you have to go function save, then let go. And there, it's holding. So you can press no, and um, now you can do stuff, you know, you can like play. Like that's a big that's that's a big step up uh, upgrade from the previous video. That thing's uh, that thing's super helpful. But actually, I I, I messed around with it a bit, and uh, you actually uh, because I was having some trouble. It was, it was it, this way. You kind of have to remember what trig it was. But what uh, what I I guess uh, is true. What you can do is you just you hold it. You do the same thing. There's no. And then actually, if you just press track goes back so you don't have to remember which one it was you just press track and it'll release it uh one one or two corrections before i go i said that you couldn't send retrig over midi with the model samples and that's true for when you're doing it live you hold retrig and press the track it's you know it it works for the audio tracks but it doesn't send that live midi uh, triggers in uh, when you're doing it that way but when you're programming on the sequencer, if you hold down a trig and P lock that trig, retrig, turn it on, uh, then it's going to send. Uh, well, as you're like, let's go to this one here. Trigger on. There it goes. You change the timing of it. Go like. See, it, it works that way, but not when it's live. See, all that, it just kind of, it's like the same as holding it. So, it only it only works for uh, the sequencer, not for sending it live. But actually, I took that to my, uh, uh, used that to my advantage. Um, I showed that in the other video. Sort of a way to kind of take advantage of that little, whatever, uh, what could be seen as a setback. Another thing is uh, these are free tracks because there's only six uh, tracks sending MIDI to the Digitech. So there's eight tracks here, so there's two free tracks. I might have made it sound like they were completely independent of everything, but they, they're they still, like, you can still put um, uh, uh, MIDI scenes. You can still put the trigs on those tracks and have them activate. So you, you can... Uh, uh, you, you you can use them to have their own sequences on them. So there's that. But if you want to have uh, those fill trig type, see the MIDI scene trigs on that same sequencer, it could get a little confusing because some of them are meant to actually trigger the audio and other ones are meant to trigger scene. So I, I would just go with like one or the other, but that's me, like just, just, for, just so you know. And I honestly can't... I'm sort of at a loss for words right now, which either means that I'm forgetting something or I've covered everything I wanted to cover. So, yeah, let me know uh, if there's a, any more, um, I guess, um, uh, extra, extra applications for this or any ways to make it better because uh, it, it really was a huge help having every, all the... Uh, comments uh down below but also on forums and people asking like i didn't know you could i didn't actually know it could be any sequencer until people uh tried it and i didn't know it worked for the uh the dig the digitone and the a4 until people had tried it and let me know and uh, i didn't know you could send midi scenes uh, or i didn't think about it. i didn't even you know i was too wrapped up in the audio tracks to really consider like oh let's try that for the midi tracks and sure enough wow you can send like you can turn this thing into just like each one of these buttons just 
is like a machine state. And considering that this Typhoon has like so many parameters, and a lot of them are, some of them are um, uh, syncing, uh, like, um, there's cut, like, uh, what is it? Uh, there's like C CC2, which I'm not sure what that means exactly, but there's CV. There's all the stuff I don't, there's just cr custom modulation. Yeah, you can, you can send scenes that control parameters of the modulation tracks here. So you've got LFOs controlling multiple parameters here within the machine. And then not only can this change, like the, this could like turn the mix or the speed of that LFO, but it could change the amounts that each parameter that's involved in that LFO actually gets fed into it from scene to scene. <laughs> it's, it just goes on and on. I didn't want to, um, it was like too much to try to uh, do all at once. I just kind of wanted to show that it was possible. So with that being said, enjoy. If you find it useful, please smash the like and subscribe and have a great day. This is Parts Project, signing off.